night off. To my immediate right is the council solicitor who will give advice on the committee, sorry, to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. Excuse me, could you ask them to stand up and we could just see them? Yeah, I was just yeah. trying to work out. You can't see anything. Okay, can you see that? Did you see the council solicitor? Okay. Thank you.
Uh, as he said in Jules, I think we need a bigger boat. Uh, I think we need a bigger room. Uh, if we can arrange that in time for the next uh, meeting, we'll, we'll make it better for the public to engage with it. I don't expect people to be in a standard position for any length of time. And finally, um, it, it is of great public interest that we do have a site visit. And I'm hoping um, we haven't you know, brought you out on a, on a winter time for, to no avail. But it, it's not unusual with applications of this type to have a site visit. So I'll move a site visit to item now. I endorse what Councillor Fowles has said, but particularly in terms of where we have the meeting next time to discuss the fire application, can I suggest that we try and find a venue in Morton Silver Massey to enlarge as many people as possible from that area? <laughs> Thank you. 
know what's going on.
welcome the development of the Ashton Court site and understand the need for new housing in the area, the current plan, we feel, is unacceptable. The proposed build would spoil the unique open space character of this pleasant corner of West Kirby. Its density and height are out of keeping, especially with Ashton Drive, a two-storey residential street. The imposing nature of the three-storey development would also cause large loss of privacy to existing residents, worsened further by four large open balconies facing Ashton Drive. Excessive noise from the balconies would cause neighbourhood discontent and complaints. Fourteen new family homes at this junction would bring a large increase in traffic movements. The south end of Ashton Drive can already get heavily congested, particularly with roadside parking. The provision of only one parking space per home will result in second cars and visitor cars being parked on the roadside. We feel plot 14 on the plan behind Ashton Drive for houses 4, 6 and 8 would be better used for additional parking rather than another two-storey house. The additional traffic will increase risk, especially for pedestrians, particularly children using the nursery opposite and the elderly, as well as for motorists. There are separately council plans under consideration introduction of two-hour restricted bay parking on Banks Road, which will inevitably lead to further increased Ashton Drive parking. New homes should be built on the Ashton Court site, but if accepted, this development will have an unacceptable adverse impact on the character of the area and the communities of neighbouring properties. We request rejection of this application. Stated that in relation to the 
application APP 1600823. Overall, housing provision on this site will reduce if this application is successful, in that the existing 22 units will be demolished and only 14 units built in their place. 10th of August 2016 to Mr. Neil Williams, Senior Planning Officer. The APP 1600823 planning file, available to members of the public to view, which was apparently not the actual working planning file, did not show the heights of the proposed buildings, which is a concern. No mention was made in the planning file, available to members of the public, that investigations for the handling of any asbestos in the existing flats carried out by the Council's Environmental Department, which is of concern. The planning application is an excellent example of poor design, not good design. The separation distances policy of the Council, <coughs> SPD2, would be breached if this planning application were to be approved. The fact that Agenda Item 7 refers to this breach as this very minor discrepancy is very troubling, since if the planning department is prepared to ignore breaches of its own planning policies, it leads to questions about the purpose of having planning policies in the first place. There is general confusion as to why this is a starfish commercial planning application, when most of the people understood the gentle living owner of the Ashton Court retirement flats. And this confusion is confirmed by the exit of um, one of your planning committee members tonight. Can I just tell you that you've spoken for four minutes now? So Very good, nearly there. Thank you. Five, okay. Yeah, yeah, nearly there. West Kirby residents are aware that Hoylake and West Kirby Urban District Council had the Ashton Court retirement flats built for elderly people in order that they could live in the heart of West Kirby with low rents. It's important that West Kirby remains an intergenerational community with elderly people seen as an important part of the community. Planning committee members should not be unduly influenced by the pressures exerted by developers, architects or people with construction consultancy backgrounds. The Council's SPD2 policy is not an aspiration, it's not a guideline, it's a policy. The Council's GRE1 policy is not an aspiration, it's not a guideline, it's a policy. In 2012, four senior officers of the council were suspended. Planning committee yes, members should be aware that sometimes they receive sorry. incomplete and or sorry. incorrect advice from officers of the council. Senior sorry. planning officers sorry. should be giving planning committee members accurate information. I hope that the planning committee Why? gives serious consideration to this petition which objects to the demolition of the 22 retirement flats at Ashton Court, Ashton Drive, West Kirby. Unsightly three-storey houses are not desired. Thank you. Sorry,
to the actual development. Um, I want to just reinforce that with the, the positive contribution to the, the actual areas, the street frontage, um, and I encourage you to approve the scheme. Thank you. 
absolutely the great concern. The other great concern, and there's quite a lot of them, and we don't have to take all, the other great concern is the idea to have these um, balconies on the, in fact, they don't call them balconies, they call them uh, elevated social spaces. That's a new one, I guess. It must have been elevated social spaces, but they're actually balconies. And the idea is that these small balconies, perhaps, you've heard of that sort of thing before, David, your professional background here. These elevated social spaces, or balconies, right close to the house number three on the top there, on the top of the right, and house number two and four on the other side. I was forgetting that we've actually given you all in your pension homes a picture of all this. You might have that with your name. Now, these elevated social spaces are very close indeed to the front garden. So I see that the Matthew is Four to you says, well, yeah, they are very close, but don't worry, because it's only front gardens, and we don't need to worry about it. Just they're not even going to do it. They might translate some. So we've got these balconies, four of them, right in front of these houses. And so my third proposal would be to knock that out, but I know you can't knock that out on its own, so I'm going to actually to reject the whole thing. So they are the main worries about the extra structure itself. In addition to that, I may say so, we have got the problem of the traffic. The plan is to have one parking space for each of these units. They're all three-story units with plenty of bedrooms. And you can imagine uh, that they all have in one space each car, it would be two cars or even three cars if the team So we're going to have two or three cars in each of these houses. There's going to be one, one parking space only. So when you came on the planning visit last week, this week, you could see how crowded the area was that they busy cars were scattered. And we're going to have all these extra cars here. Not only going to have the extra cars, but we're going to have them moving. And not just parked. They're going to be in and out. They're going to come in and out of the, not from the main road, but from the side so I'm going to some drive behind the bus. Thank you, Matthew. It's just behind, and all these cars are going to be coming in out of there. All the cars, even more than the, 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 the cars, will be parked in the road, which is a very crowded road, or parked on the main road. And by the way, some of you know that there is a plan at the moment to reduce the parking on the main road to allow it to be only, it's all there at the moment, but it's going to be reduced to two hours. And if that happens, they're all going to be up around the ground, ash to try them all over the place. So my fourth reason for asking you to check this is that the parking is just ridiculous. <laughs> then also, just as the traffic, I'll barely finish that, we're pleased to hear. The, the fourth, the other quick one is the traffic itself. They're all going to come in there. There's a nursery right option, which is at all sorts of days, you've got to go all the way around the the day. There are, uh, it's a route through to the schools of nearby St. Bridges School and other schools. So the traffic at all these 14 houses and then one or two or three cars, they can be horrendous. So you can have a danger to all the children in there, not just the fact that they're there, uh, but the children are there. So for many reasons, I've got to say to you that it's a totally unacceptable plan, as far as I understand it is. Um, Sorry to keep this going on, but it's really important to us. Please, will you reject this application and get them to come back with a successful application with less property and not just cash and put a bit of traffic in other front of the vehicle and, not, and more parking spaces. So that's it, and thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Joe. Um,
so from the back end of the plot 7 um, to, the, to the boundary edge is, uh, as I say, 14 metres. It's a little bit further to um, the gable end of number 3. And for those members who are present on site, um, there are windows in the gable end of that property, but they're obscurely glazed and they don't relate to habitable room windows. Um, there are, however, habitable room windows um, on the front of this property that look out towards that. They don't directly, they're not um, facing each other, they're on a 90 degree angle. Um, so the separation distance that we've measured is, is taken from the outside wall. It, it reaches uh, my habitable room separation distance. Excuse me, sir. Quiet. Let's go back to this. Uh, these are, these, this is a uh, plot. So this is plot seven, um, and these are the balconies here, but they're inset if you like. Um, so, but the, the distance is 